If one were trying to seek out a soulful, caring person who exhibits an unabashed love for the banjo, combined with the renaissance spirit of a Texas maverick, your search would likely lead you to Scott Whitfield. A groundbreaking banjoist and entertainer who, through music, has enhanced the lives of thousands, Whitfield's banjo journey is a simple byproduct of a child's desire to stand apart from the crowd. Growing up on the fringes of West Texas, by the time Scott showed an interest in music in 1966, it seemed that everyone was playing the guitar. So, just to be different, Whitfield started out on the ukulele and quickly segued to the folk five-string banjo. Forming his own band in the sixth grade, Scott played at school functions and parties and in just a few years had earned enough money to buy his first Gibson tenor banjo. With no instructors in his remote area, Whitfield was forced to teach himself, while his passion for the instrument led to his developing into a fine tenor banjoist on his own, the exercise instilled in him the importance of a proper musical education. Determined to help others avoid the long path he had taken to achieve musical excellence, Scott pledged to dedicate a large portion of his multifaceted musical career to the education of others. As part of the formal musical training, which resulted in him earning a Bachelor of Music degree from Midwestern State University in 1977, Whitfield became a drum major, developing performance skills on virtually every instrument in the school band and orchestra. Literally working his way through high school and college with ongoing banjo gigs at regional pizza parlors, along with jazz, country, rock, and pop band engagements, Scott's education was put to work when he took leading roles in the direction of many of his school's jazz ensembles, choirs, and recitals. Every commitment he'd made to music and the music business came together when Whitfield moved to Dallas following college. After working as a teacher, retail salesman, education program designer, and commercial music producer for a Dallas music store, Whitfield ultimately took over the business, rebranding his new company Scott Sound Music. During the years that followed, Scott Sound touched the lives of tens of thousands of students who learned the joy of music through Whitfield's fulfillment of his commitment to musical education. Such an admirable accomplishment came, however, at the price of Whitfield's own performance career. Missing his beloved tenor banjo, after a seven-year hiatus, he marked a date on the calendar, giving himself a year to prepare to return to performing. But instead of picking up where he had left off, the inventive musician reimagined the possibilities for the tenor banjo and set out on a predetermined course to present the instrument in a musical fusion of rock, progressive jazz, and funk. While that ambitious goal was being brought to fruition with groups such as the Ballistics, Whitfield never lost sight of his banjo roots, becoming a driving force in the founding of the Dallas Banjo Band, while developing a reputation as a leading purveyor of the classic jazz soundtrack that sparked hundreds of private, civic, and corporate events around the Dallas metro area. As a self-proclaimed Texas maverick, Scott Whitfield's active lifestyle includes storm chasing, motorcycle touring, garden railroading, and community emergency response volunteerism. Yet it is through music and the passion, inspiration, and instruction that he has shared with thousands that has allowed Scott Whitfield to leave his own unique, indelible, and positive mark on the already impressive musical legacy of the Lone Star State. I'm honored. 
kind of humbled here. Um, trying to get some notes out here. Sorry. Um, anyway, I'm I'm very humbled uh, to be um, inducted into the Hall of Fame. Um, I have some people to thank. Uh, of course, uh, all the people at the museum, Johnny and Margie, and uh, the staff there, and the board. Um, you know, the these guys have, I know I've done it before myself, but these guys have gone to uh, great uh, expense, trouble, and they're very brave because we're all here together and we're having a great time this year. So I think we need to honor the folks that put this on. So let's give them a hand. I'd also like to thank Terry Ann. Where is she? Oh, yeah, she's in my motorcycle vest, or Karen's motorcycle vest over there. Uh, and, and her husband, Bob Rogers, for uh, helping with my nomination here and, and putting my name up for it. I appreciate that. Um, also, thanks to all my students who have actually uh, attended here and are in attendance tonight. Would those students please stand up? All my banjo students, please. I'd um, like to thank all of uh, my fellow musicians uh, that uh, have supported me and uh, some of the administrators and professionals uh, who've supported my nomination. Uh, and also a big thank you to my wife, Karen, standing right back there. <laughs> Karen has helped me run uh, my company, Scott Sound Music, uh, for quite a few years now. And uh, I appreciate everything that she does to support music and the banjo and, and me. So thank you, Karen. You know, it's great to have all of these students to be here to support the festivities and all of you players. All my students are going to enjoy this weekend playing together meeting all of you wonderful players that are here. Um, music is a valued part of our society and the banjo is not only our American instrument, but it can bring music into our lives and enrich our lives and provide a vast vehicle for lear a learning experience. Um, it's been my personal observation uh, while playing over the past year at Six Flags Over Texas, we were very fortunate. We started January 9th uh, there. And um, it's, it's been amazing to watch uh, students of, uh, I'm sorry, people of all ages, children, teens, adults. They'll pass the stage at Six Flags. They'll give us a thumbs up. They'll clap. People appreciate live music more now than ever before after being cooped up for a year and a half. And of course, all of us professional musicians appreciate that too, uh, to be able to get out and play again. So what we, we have is we have an opportunity here. We need to find ways to use the banjo as a vehicle to propel future generations into appreciating and performing not only our tried and true banjo music, but we need to introduce newer, high quality music to capture the interests of our youth. Our society needs it, and at this point in time, we have a unique opportunity to bring the banjo to the forefront in musical education and entertainment. 
So let's all see if we can make a promise to ourselves to go out, promote the banjo, and promote the banjo's use, use in newer music. Again, thank you for this honor and accepting me into the American Banjo Museum Hall of Fame. Thank you. Thank you.